Welcome to this online standards development training for voters who are managing their national near committees in the global directory. This is sometimes referred to as option A. Today, we're going to go through what is online standards development. We're going to review the knowledge base, which is your library of OSD resources, how to identify projects that have online documents, accessing an online document, making comments in the OSD, and then how to organize and submit your national comments to ISO. At the end, we'll have a brief summary, as well as a reminder of where you can find help and support when using the OSD. This is a list as of the very beginning of 2024 of those members whose national near committees are being managed in the global directory. If you are unsure, please don't hesitate to contact your user administrator or the help desk to confirm whether or not your members are being managed in the global directory. This is really key as it's the global directory which allows the access to the online document directly for commenting. An additional note on the training content. Some of these images and videos were taken in the training environment as well. We are making updates on regular basis to the OSD, which means that some of the wording and buttons might not appear exactly as you'll see them in this presentation. As well, additional functionalities are being added. This can all be found on the knowledge base. So we'll highlight that um, when we get to that section. To start off with though, what is online standards development? And before I go any further, I just would like to take a moment to remind you that as this is a recording, you will be able to adjust the speed. So if I'm talking too fast and you want the content to slow down, you can slow down the speed of the video using the bottom menu of the video controls. There should be an option for your playback speed um, which would be something like 0 0.5 or 0 0.75 times the regular speed in order to slow down how quickly I'm going to this information. You can also speed it up if, um, if you would like to go through the content uh, quicker. But to get back to online standards development, this is really designed to be a single source of truth where we can have our collaborative authoring, member commenting, Comments, consent, comments resolution and consensus building, as well as the ISO CS internal editing all happening in the same place. Not only that, but it enables us to have technology assisted standards development. So we've integrated the stages of development into the OSD tool. We have different aspects of assisted authoring during the authoring stages, as well we automate the directives. So as the document moves through the process, certain things will be changed based on um, where the document is. Now, the goal for this is for the committees to have a more collaborative, more effective, and more transparent experience, along with a better guidance and an overall simpler and simpler experience for making standards. For members as well, there are a number of benefits so we hope that the OSD can ease your national commenting process when it comes to international standards. So with having access for commenting by national experts directly in the document, you can facilitate your consensus building and improve your consolidation tasks, as well as your management of these comments by national um, mayor committee members, as well as a simplified submission for your national comments. With all of these benefits in mind, we do want to highlight that the processes and directives have not changed. So the rules, the IEC, ISO directives have not changed at all. The main thing that's different is where you're interacting with the content. And for this presentation, we're going to touch upon really in focus with the member commenting that you'd have during a CD consultation or DIS valid. So this is for our voters in stages 30.20 and 40.20. For these two stages, whether you're using the process highlighted in this presentation, which is our option A, commenting directly within OSD, or the option B, still using the previous template and uploading it, 
This is covered in the voter um, option B training. So this won't be gone over in this training. Uh, if you would like to know how to upload with how to upload, how to upload uh, national comments using the commenting template, you can check out the knowledge base or the voter training um, for those national mayor committee members who are not managing their national mayor committees in the global directory. So there's a training dedicated to this as well as information on the knowledge base. Either way, um, in both cases, you do need to submit the national um, comments into the OSD directly. So this submission process is necessary in order for the national comments to be visible and accessible to the ISO committee manager once the consultation or ballot closes. And we'll go through this process a little bit later in the training. So this is just the highlighting and overview of what the OST is designed to do and how it can hopefully benefit you and your work. Before we go further into these uh, different aspects uh, of the OST itself, we wanna highlight where you can go to for help and support. And that's really the Knowledge Base website. So let's watch a quick recording about what's available on the Knowledge Base website. Welcome to the ISO Help Desk Knowledge Base page. Here under online standards development, we've got many articles and resources to get you not only started, but also to continue working within the online standards development tool. So on the left-hand side, we've got many links, whether you're just getting started you know what you're looking for in terms of drafting in an online document, um, as well as different features, including commenting, resolving comments, um, and key stages such as member commenting during a CD consultation or DIS ballot. There are articles that'll walk you through each of these aspects of the OSD. The Getting Started page also has our OSD release notes. These are also linked to at the bottom. And these release notes will tell you what exactly is new in the OSD. We're making continued improvements to the tool. So this is a great place to look when you want to know what the most recent um, additions and improvements are. Now, if you are using the OSD as a National Mirror Committee member or a voter, we have quick start guides for both of these um, groups. And these are resources you can easily share as well within your colleagues for those who are um, looking for more information on the OSD tool. So as you can see, we've got dedicated pages to walk you through all of the information that you'll see in today's presentation as well. Another thing we wanna highlight is being able to identify those projects with online documents uh, that you might be responsible for. So not all of our projects will be going through the OSD at the moment. We hope to increase the number that um, of online standards, of standards that are being developed online. So hopefully we'll be seeing these more and more. So in order to keep track of where these standards are, uh, within the documents that you're responsible for. Let's take a quick look through ISO projects. So within ISO, pro ISO projects, you can search for those projects with an online document um, under the additional filters option. So from the search tab in the left-hand side of the screen, under additional filters, there is a filter for with online document. And this is how you can search and verify which um, projects will have coming in that require you to make comments in an online document. Here is a quick look at what that search looks like. So from the search, you can scroll down under additional filters for with online document. And you can also select the specific stage. So while doing this, you should be able to identify which documents you will have to send out um, the online link for that will go through in this process. 
you can also save the predetermined search. That way you can quickly access this information at a later date. So for gathering these national comments. So once we've recognized that we can go for some help at the knowledge base if needed, um, we can find these documents in ISO projects. Now, what actually is happening to get this document out and available to your national mirror committees? For option A, our national commenting in the OSD, the first step is the same as that you've been doing before. So our voters would disseminate the link of the online document to National Mirror Committee secretaries using their usual member distribution channels. Now, I've, you've noticed I've mentioned that you're distributing a link to the online document rather than a PDF document. This is the one part that's a little bit different. The dissemination um, method that you're using, however, will remain the same as this depends on uh, the National Mirror Committees. Our national experts, so those registered in the NMC, would then be able to access that document through the link in order to provide their comments directly in the context of the document. Finally, the voters or National Mirror Committee secretaries can consolidate these comments and submit which ones they want to have as their national contributions to ISO. While making these comments, you'll only be able to see the comments from your National Mirror Committee. So let's look at this step by step. So step one, you'll get the link from the balloting application. So rather than that having the link to a document again, you're gonna just have a link link. Um, you won't be downloading or attaching any files. This link you can send out through your usual channels for those to access. A additional note for those um, iSolutions members using national electronic balloting, if you're using national electronic balloting, you'll have the online document link automatically available to the national ballot. Once that link is sent out, um, whether it's uh, disseminated by the voter or through the national e-balloting, the national experts can access and make their comments in the document. The default permissions for National Mirror Committee members, um, for when it comes to looking at the content of the online document, the National Secretary and Support Team, as well as the National Chair, will be responsible for consolidating national comments and submitting those to ISO, as well as accepting and rejecting national comments. The National Committee members and observers are able to provide comments. You'll, they will also see other people's comments from within their committee, and they can support um, or do not support those comments as well. And I'll show you a little bit about what that means in a few slides. If more than one National Mirror Committee is linked to an ISO committee, um, those members can view the comments from all of the NMCs. All that they're um, associated with, not just magically everyone. So once accessing the document, comments can simply be added in. And here we have a little animation highlighting adding in comments or proposals. Now there's only one button to add in comments um, with the extension for a proposal. We'll see that a little bit later. But these are made, as we can see here, directly in the document. Getting into a little bit more detail of what you'll see on these cards, and I'll have a um, Another slide going over how to make comments and proposals a little bit later, but to cover what's on a comment and proposal once it's in the document, let's take a look at these next couple of slides. So this first one is looking at a commenting card. Um, so a commenting card is for um, general commentary on the document. So usually things such as that, um, a section is confusing, maybe it needs to move somewhere else, things like this where you're not indicating a direct replacement to the content. When first being made, you'll be able to see the person's ID, num uh, ID as well as the number for uh, the comment itself. You'll have a three-dot menu on the right-hand side of the card that gives you access to edit, or remove, or view the comment in context in the case that the content's removed. 
You can also agree and disagree with the comment. Now, these buttons have since been updated to say, I support, do not support for the information being put forward. And you can also reply to comments. Similarly, on a proposal card, you'll have the same options to support and not support as well as to reply to the proposals. However, in this instance, you'll also be able to see the proposed changes in red and green, exactly in the contents of the context itself. So while making a proposed change, you'll actually have the text that you've highlighted to make the proposal on um, in the box itself. And this is where you'll directly make your changes. As you type the changes in, the tool will add in this content in either red or green, red for if you're removing content, green for if you're adding in content. Um, and this will then show up afterwards for everyone else um, to see and review. A global comment is another option that you have, and this is making a comment on the entire document. So from the top little menu um, where we can add in our comments, you can here add in a global comment. Now we've mentioned before submitting, and we'll come back to this a couple of times, but once you've got um, your comments in the document, you wanna select which ones will be submitted. And these are the ones again, that will be visible and accessible to the ISO committee manager after the consultation closes. Anything that hasn't been submitted will not be visible to um, the committee after the consultation closes. Now, this is very simple. If you're doing this from the commenting cards directly, there is simply a checkbox at the top to make the comments national. Uh, while going through these and making comments national, you'll also notice that the look and feel of the comments changes. So nationalized comments, those will be submitted are very easy to identify as they do become green in color. They indicate the country code for that National Mirror Committee um, rather than the name of the individual who first made them. And they'll have a little flag indicating that it's a national comment. Here is another quick animation about um, putting this all together for making comments. And to add in my comments and suggestions, I can simply highlight the text, um, whether that's a single word, an entire paragraph, or the entire clause. You can also make comments on different parts of the, of the document, such as the figures, footnotes, tables, and images that we've seen uh, in the overview tab. You can also select those to make comments on them. Now I'm going to click on the comment bu button, which pops up. I can also select the text and go to this commenting bar at the top and choose comment as well. And now I have my little comment bubble to fill out. Here under the drop down, I can choose whether I'm adding a technical, general, or editorial comment. And I can add in general feedback. So the main focus for these types of comments would be something general, such as this is unclear where you're not sure what exactly to suggest. And we can save this here. Once we have um, our comment bubble in place and we start seeing other members comment bubbles, we can choose whether we support or do not support their commentary. We can also add in different replies. My reply comment. And here we can include this as a conversation all attached together. Now, if I know exactly what I want to suggest for my comments, I can do this in the same way. So I'm going to start again by highlighting the text that I want to make a comment on. Except this time, I'm going to click on this box that says propose a change. Now, once I've clicked on this box, as we can see, I now have a pop up, which includes the exact text that I've highlighted in the document. And here I can directly make my edits. So perhaps this was not in June, but maybe it was in July. And we can see my change right below already previewed. 
I can add in my motivation behind my proposed change in the comment section. So the date is incorrect. Incorrect. And I can save my change. So now here we can navigate and view again each of these bubbles rather easily by clicking either on the comments themselves um, or clicking through the text. Once I've clicked on this, I can also add in my support um, or do not support. And much like the commas, you can add in your replies as well. Once you have lots of comments in your document, if you want to focus on certain ones, we also have a filtering comments feature up at the top, which allows you to choose different types of um, criteria to enable you to um, quickly go through different comments. These options will be different based on the stage that you're in. So going through that global overview, hopefully it makes a little more sense when we've gone through each of these items individually. Now, once we've got comments submitted to our document, then what happens next? So let's look at some of the advanced features in the OSD for managing comments um, when submitting them directly into the document for option A. So for viewing and organizing comments. Again, as um, the different comments come in, our voters and National Mirror Committee secretaries can automatically view all of the national comments provided by the experts within those groups in the context of the document. Now, up at the top, you'll have access to what's called our Manage Comments Dashboard. And this is a tool designed to help you do exactly that to manage these comments. You can also access this from the Comments to Resolve tab on the right-hand menu uh, of the OSD. So I'll let this animation play through again, just to quickly highlight these two locations where you can access the Manage Comments Dashboard. Here on this dashboard, we have a lot of key pieces of information. So we'll have the total number of comments and changes proposed in the draft. You'll see your top five clauses with the most comments and change proposals um, within them. You'll also have unresolved comments and change proposals by topic. And we'll get to topics in a moment, as well as those with no topic, a breakdown by type as well as a breakdown by status and this will show up as national and made not, and um, they're submitted and not submitted as national um, for these stages. Now this is on the overview tab of the manage comments dashboard and there's three tabs within this dashboard. If we go along to the next tab, the comments tab. Here you have a dedicated look of the comments themselves. So you're coming outside of the document to fully focus on the comments and proposals that have been made. You can filter these again using all the same filters you can use um, when looking directly in the document. And you can also view the comment in the context of the document itself for a quick view. Here is a quick little look at what this looks like. So again, we can see all of our comments um, by different sections. You can expand and collapse these sections as well. So if you want to focus just on one section, this is a great way to do that. We'll see that just one more time. Now these filters, the ones above um, in this, um, the comments management, um, dashboard as well within the document um, have different options. So again, we've seen that they might be a little bit different depending on the stage you're in, but generally speaking, you can filter comments by type, resolutions, um, the different stages, your topics and tags, which again, I'll get to in a moment, um, the different users, as well as things like creation date or the type of element they're on. 
So this can really help you, particularly when using things like topics and tags to quickly organize your comments. You can also modify the type of comment from the comments dashboard. And this is with a little drop down next to the type of comment. You can quickly change this. So topics and tags, I mentioned these a few times and they're really key to helping you organize um, what's in your document, particularly when it comes to reviewing this content and deciding what's being moved forward um, as a national comment. So topics are used to group comments together under a specific area um, or topic of discussion. So using a topic is kind of like adding your comment or proposal to a bucket. You can only have one topic per um, comment or proposal. And it's, it's really grouping them together under something like, imagine putting it in a bucket. Tags, on the other hand, can be assigned to comments to better filter and locate them. So this is essentially adding additional information to the comment, kind of like adding a new label to it. So you can have multiple labels added to each comment. Um, and these are completely independent of the topics themselves. So adding the tags is like adding a label and adding a topic to a comment is essentially like putting it into a bucket. managing topics. So <laughs> I'll try not to get too tongue tied by the end of the recording. So for managing topics, this can be done from the comments tab in the manage comments dashboard. So in the same dashboard we were just looking at, we have the option to um, click on this little drop down menu that we see on the left here to add and remove um, topics. Um, as well as to add the comments to topics. So really, you'll check the checkbox off first before adding um, a comment uh, topic to a comment. We'll see that in just another slide. And you can also manage your topics and view topics, view comments per topic using the blue topic button. So that one's more about managing the topics, the blue button that we see on the left, on the right hand side. So to create and assign topics, you're gonna first select using the little checkbox um, which comments you want to add, and then you can go to the drop down to add however many you have selected to a specific topic. This will bump you to this page that we see on the screen now, where you can either select an existing topic or create a new one um, to add these two. Tags are. Um, a little bit simpler to add in. This is the third tab in the Manage Comments dashboard. And here you can simply type in your, um, your desired tag in the box and then click on Add. So first, following number one to get to the Tags um, tab, number two, adding in your tag, and number three, clicking the Add button to confirm. And next to each tag, you have a little Edit Pencil and a Delete Trash Can. Um, to edit or delete your tags. If you're editing or deleting um, either a tag or a topic, it'll automatically be modified on any comment or proposal that it's already been placed on. Um, so if you change, uh, if you do the editing, then it'll be updated for everything. If you delete it, it's gonna just be removed from all of those um, comments and proposals. To assign tags to comments, this can again be done from the comments tab and it's the button right next to adding topics. Here you can see in our screenshot, however, that they show up as a little checkbox and that's because you can select more than one when you're adding these tags to your topics. So again, following our little numbers, for number one, you wanna select which comments you're including. Number two, opening up the drop down menu for adding and removing tags. Number three, selecting what you want. And finally, number four, which we don't have on the screen, is setting your tags, so that blue set tags button. And again, we'll go through another little video to see what this looks like all together. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to have a big amount of comments and it's becoming a bit difficult for me to follow up. That's why we have uh, this managed comment model that Christina has brilliantly presented today. Um, here we, we, we change our perspective. Um, 
we really are in the dashboard, in a monitor to organize the comments and to follow up. So basically the topics that you can see here and the tags, they are tools we provide uh, committee managers, voters, when they have to deal with a lot of comments and they want to organize their work. These are features that will never be used if you have five, six, seven comments because you can very easily deal with them just from this place. You can just go here, you can just add some stuff and you can submit them, reject them. But as soon as you have a lot and there's a notion of priority, is when these features become very useful because you can create as many tags as you want. So low priority, uh, medium priority, and at the moment, we don't provide any uh, default tags. The, the committee managers, the voters, they can do anything they want. They can create 100 if they need to. And we've seen some committee managers and voters actually using these features a lot. And then these tags I can add directly into the comments, either from the document itself. So I'm going to add a tag here saying that this one is urgent. There we go. I'm saving it. And now when I want to filter here because I have a meeting with my national mirror committee, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to filter all the comments which are urgent and I'm focusing where it matters. So basically I have two comments which are urgent and we can just skip from one to the next. And the same way uh, I can actually add, add these tags to the comments from this place here where I have a visibility of all comments that are in my document, but on the list to view. So we are outside of the publication and I'm just focusing on the comments that are there. I can collapse the view to see where they are in the document. Okay, so here I have nine comments on close 4.1. It seems to be a hot spot. Let's look into them. Okay, I have these comments. This one is dealt with perfect. So I can filter here. Actually, I do not want to see the submitted comments. And now I can really focus. So there's a little issue here. I need to check that, but this should be removed. It's good to sometimes do demos. Um, and I can focus on the rest of my work. Regarding the topics, because it's sometimes confusing for users, the difference between topics and tags. Topics are a way for you to merge comments and group them together when they are similar or they kind of uh, relate to each other. So tags are just a data, a, a, an additional filter you add to enrich the comments. So you say that this comment is about ISO, it's about uh, cars, it's about environment. Here it's deeper. Basically, you can group and merge comments that relate to the same issue but are different, or they are all duplicates. So basically, you want to create a big bucket, like I like the expression bucket Christina used, it's a bucket and then you can filter on the bucket and you see all the comments that relate to that bucket. And what is really nice is that you can add, you see some description. So basically those three comments have been grouped. They are French comments about sustainability. And here as an NNC, you can add all the discussion that uh, you're going to have about this topic to make the National Mirror Committee expert understand why some of their comments are raised and some of their comments are not raised as national ultimately. And the same applies at resolution stage of uh, national comments at stage 3060, 4060. Uh, the committee managers have this possibility to group comments together, add this um, rationale here, so that afterwards for the, the experts who are going to follow up, they can see that their comment was taken into account. It was grouped inside the topic. It has been discussed. There's a rationale why they are going to be resolved this way, why they are going to be deferred, why they are going to be accepted. And then uh, you can basically save that resolution at the topic level. And when you are inside here, you can resolve the comment at once. Like I showed you, I'm selecting those three comments. We are going to submit them or we are going to reject them with an additional motivation that is here. So it, it, it's definitely more steps um, than they could have been in the past, but it really enriches uh, the processes of resolution of comments a lot. 
and it facilitates the experience for um, the committee managers and the voters also to bring that transparency which is very much needed uh, when when experts afterward try to follow up why their comments was accepted rejected um, etc um, in the dashboard here as you can see i'm only going to see the topics that still contain unresolved comments and why do we do that basically it's like issue management so you create your topics you group your comments inside and you deal with them and you can see the progress of your work so here i only have one open topic left with two unresolved comments um, it helps me organize my work so you see i have 100 comments i create 10 topics with 10 buckets of 10 ordered by different priorities and i can just go through them solve my issues and provide a clear guidance also um, about how much time I need to carry on with my work, uh, etc. So this dashboard is always updated on the fly. Uh, when you make action, you can go back here, it's updated with the new data, and you can see where the comments are and how many are left and what is their type and uh, in which clauses they belong. All right, so that was a little bit of how all of those tags and topics and making comments fit together. We also saw a quick look at um, submitting those comments as national. So we'll come back to that and go over it um, step by step as well. Uh, but for removing or submitting national comments, let's take a quick look at this and we'll get right into that information. So for rejecting a national comment, so from the national comments cards, all of this will start with the same process and that's clicking on the blue button. Um, for any kind of management, you're always following the blue buttons in the OSD. So from the commenting card, you can click on manage comment. You can choose the option not to submit it as a national comment and click on save decision. From here, you can these will now be added to that designated filter that you can see that they have not been accepted, but you have gone through to confirm them. And we'll take a look one more time at this animation. So I'll jump back and forth just to restart it. So again, following the blue button, choosing the not submit as national option, including your motivation and saving the decision. Now, once these comments are rejected, again, they'll show up with a little um, tag that says they have not been uh, accepted. And these ones will not be visible by the committee manager after the end of the ballot or consultation. If you need to edit or remove a national contribution, then from the three dot menu on the commenting card, you can choose to edit or remove that comment. And once you've got comments that have been made national, you can also edit or discard these comments. So again, using the three dot menu on the side of the commenting card, you have the option to edit or discard. A note to mention is that if you're using option A, you'll still see the um, commenting card, but it'll move from being national to not accepted. So if you're clicking on this discard option, it'll simply switch to being not accepted. This is a little bit different for those using option B where the comment itself will actually disappear. Now we mentioned that there's also a checkbox on the comment itself. You can use them to make national. This can also be done as a voter. If you are creating a new comment, you can make it national directly. So whether you're making a comment or a proposal, there's just a simple checkbox to add on um, to make this show up directly in green. Now the comments to resolve tab, we saw this very briefly in part of the animation um, just before with Patrice walking us through tags and topics. This is on the right hand side of the OSD. It can be expanded or collapsed with the little arrow bar at the top. And here under this comments to resolve tab, you can easily view comments in place by clause as well, as well as resolving multiple um, comments at once.
So if we're looking at a single selection, we can see accessing this section. We'll, we'll go through one at a time first. When looking at this animation, we can see um, submitting something as national directly from the comment. So again, clicking on that submit as national button and saving the decision. Now it's showing up in green. Um, as we saw in the little uh, screenshot previously with the country code and a national flag on it. You may have noticed that next to the big blue button for saving a decision is that you can save a draft decision. So comments and proposals um, can be saved as drafts before their final decision. And this is simply done by following the initial few steps. So you're managing the comment, selecting a decision, but rather than clicking on the blue button, you're just clicking on the save as draft button next to it. And again, to highlight, once something is accepted, you'll see the country code as well as the national flag to confirm that it has indeed been submitted. And we recommend using those filters at the end. You can filter by which comments have been submitted as national, and which ones haven't, which ones haven't been managed to verify what you're submitting um, before the end of the ballot or consultation. So a quick summary of what we've gone through today. So this has been our session all on member commenting within the online document. So this is for those projects with an online draft where your national MIR committees are being managed through the global directory. For this group, the OSD has lots of uh, features um, to support your comment resolutions, um, including, the available to, uh, including the ability to make comments within the context of the document directly, as well as organizing those comments with different things such as our tags and topics, as well as um, by users, things like that. And you can also quickly resolve these comments either by um, on the commenting card um, themselves or using that comments to resolve tab to resolve or reuse resolutions. This again can all be done um, in the OSD and they must be submitted in the online document in order to be viewed at the next step. Additional places for help and support. The last place we haven't mentioned is our help beacon. So at any point when you're working in the OSD, um, you'll see this question mark in a red circle at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And this will pop open a little search tab where you can either search our knowledge base um, or contact the help desk. And you can do that right through that little tab. And along with this session recording, we also have a quick start guide to commenting for those National Mirror Committee members. So this simply goes over the aspects of making the comments and proposals themselves, um, not the information for managing comments, um, but this can also be sent out with your document link through those regular channels uh, in case those members want some help getting started with making those comments. Thank you for watching. We hope that this uh, video recording has helped ease you into the process of using uh, the OSC to make your comments and submit comments um, directly online. We look forward to seeing you using the OSD.